People are curious why recently some of the biggest retailers in Canada are shutting down. Don't you think knowing the reasons can help us make informed investment decisions while staying ahead of the curve? Hi, my name is Sunny and a quick like share alongside smashing that like button will be highly appreciated. Hundreds of retail stores are being shut down across the US where California is affected the hardest. This slow collapse of physical stores is going on for a while now and in 2023 alone about 2000 locations will shut down. Experts believe missteps by executives and pandemic related challenges are major contributors and eventually some of them have filed for bankruptcies. During pandemic, retail sales went up as e-commerce rose at the cost of brick and mortar retailers. Consequently, they were not able to fulfill their lease obligations that has a ripple effect on real estate investment trusts which own big shopping malls in North America. Multiple Canadian retailers are either shutting down their physical stores or filing for bankruptcy as there is a seismic change in retail sector. Whether it's Carlton Cards, Bench or Forever 21, a brick and mortar retail business model is changing forever. Like America, Canadian consumer behavior is changing very rapidly as most of us prefer to now shop online. Most big American brands who entered Canadian market with much fanfare are leaving, latest being Nordstrom who is now closing all their Canadian operations. According to Retail Insider, more than 90 foreign companies entered Canadian retail space in the last couple of years. Canada is geographically very large with a diverse population, so when a new entrant expands too quickly, shoppers often are not able to properly resonate with the new brands. Often we have sticky shopping habits or even get attracted to cheaper alternatives that are available at smaller mom and pop shops especially during today's inflationary times. Also, new retailers have to furnish their stores while investing both in supply chain and employee training, which can be very expensive, thus increasing their cost to do business. At the end, I believe brand loyalty plays a huge role why one is more famous and profitable than others. Hope you get the idea. There is a seismic shift how people shop that is from physical stores to e-commerce and this trend accelerated during pandemic shutdowns. Some of the brick and mortar stores have evolved to cater to this changing trend, but most big box stores were stuck in their old business model, hence are now facing challenges. Surely millennials prefer online shopping, which gives them more options, ease of use, convenience, home delivery and liberal return policy all at click of a button. Online shopping trend is an industry disruptor. That is why even Walmart is focusing more on their e-commerce side of business. Nordstrom is the latest American giant to exit Canadian retail space, which some believe is not Canadian enough. I think Canadian retail space is too diverse like its population, which is spread over this vast country. Surely that might have put enormous stress on supply chain as customer choices are different on West, Mid and East side of Canada. Ideally, they should have just opened a couple of stores in Eastern and Western Canada to gauge the market and then slowly ramp up. But often big corporations are in hurry both during entry as well as exiting a market in my limited wisdom. Recently, an irreversible trend of going online is picking up both for services as well as shopping. Consequently, future of retail in our downtown and business districts looks uncertain as there are multiple factors at play. Just imagine the rent you need to shell out for a prime location and why would you pay that when a trend is moving online? Surely this will affect rentals in shopping malls, but I think in a capitalistic society, inefficiencies are weeded out and most efficient and profitable businesses survive. 
Hence, I would avoid investing in REITs as well as stocks of brick and mortar retailers, at least right now. As a disclaimer, I'm not a financial advisor. Please consult one before investing based on your personal financial situation and don't forget to do your own due diligence. If you like the content that I make, please help me and my channel by liking, sharing and subscribing to it. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.